Hello and welcome to the PFFUI podcast. On this month's episode, 8th District Vice President Mark Sanders joins President Tony Murray and Communications Director Eric Scheub. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the PFFUI podcast. My name is Eric Scheub and I'm joined today by Tony Murray. Hey, Tony. How's it going today? Pretty good, Eric. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well, thanks. Good to be here. Yeah, so with you again. Absolutely. So we are joined by a very special guest today, Eighth District Vice President Mark Sanders. Tony, tell us a bit about District Vice President Sanders. Well, where do I begin? Well, I'll keep it brief because uh, we want to hear from we want to hear from Mark. Mark, welcome to Indianapolis. Uh, I know that uh, we're here uh, this week, uh, the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, for the first 8th District Conference, IFF 8th District Conference, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, So it, it's I'm pleased to uh, have our friend here from the 8th District, uh, Mark Sanders, who I uh, became acquainted with some dozen years ago, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, have developed a, a really great working relationship with Mark for uh, over the, the past number of years. So we, it, we're I'm glad that you're here today to join us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Eric. And thank you, Brother Murray. And yes, it was probably 20 odd years ago, probably right here in this uh, vicinity, because um, there was a function of some sort and you were with the PFFUI in Hamilton County in some regard and getting kind of up and going. And we kind of struck it off uh, that evening. And um I think we've been friends ever since, and here we are now. Absolutely. Here we are. Glad to be here. Yeah. Good to have you. So, Mark, your career in the fire service started with the Cincinnati Fire Department. Could you tell us how your fire career got started? Well, I'll go before that because my time started actually in Marion, Ohio, my hometown, not my birth town, but my home, uh, Marion Local 379, which is like the backbone of the fire of the IAFF fire departments of about 70 members, three firehouses, uh, industrial kind of blue collar yeah. city in uh, with 35, 40,000 people in central Ohio and um, married my high school sweetheart, ended up in Marion um, there and was laid off by my father, actually, who was local president, state president, became safety director of Marion, Ohio. Um, um, It was a labor appointment to a first-time Democrat mayor and who knows how long. And uh, the economy turned and I got laid off for a year and ended up in Cincinnati, Eric. And uh, probably the best thing, uh, one of the best things that ever happened because I already had our two children, but just um, uh, it's a great department really was transitioning up when I got there. Very strong union department, Local 48. Yeah, Central Ohio. Yeah. That's, uh... Yes. So got Cincinnati. Um, Forrest Buckley was the president. He was kind of a larger-than-life fixture and um, uh, got on there in 1984. And actually, the IAFF convention was in Cincinnati when I was in drill school. So oh, wow. I got to visit the convention for just in and out one, you know, a Sunday afternoon before I went back to drill school. Probably so had you work it, doing something. My father, yeah, it was interesting, actually. Well, here, I want to go down this road. You asked me about Cincinnati, so yeah. now I'm ambling. But um, no, career in Cincinnati. Started in 1984, retired when I was elected, uh, shortly after elected to this position in the 8th District because it's in my mind, a full-time job. And so I just um, had some time I could have spent there, but decided that this was my focus uh, and um, uh, came into this in 2016, but 32 years uh, in Cincinnati and um, rode every, you know, rode the paramedic unit, uh, ended up being a fire lieutenant, um, and that reached my pinnacle. But um, it's a great career. Great fire department. Um, you were, you were also a paramedic, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And how many years were you in there? Uh, I was a paramedic when I got hired, which was an odd thing in Cincinnati. Um, 
we took the test with 5,000 people, uh, and they were had 33 paramedics on the street when I got hired in 1984. So we got a drill school and um, was put on the medic unit quite a bit because they were short. We only had four in the whole city. And uh, actually, um, that was a pretty good bump in pay to yeah. take that promotion. So um, four in this whole city running yes. four paramedics. Yeah, that's kind of hard. Police used to transport the walking wounded, we called them. Wow. Um, How things have changed. Yes, yes. And now I think there's 12 transport units and the same number of engine companies and ladder companies and a couple of heavy rescues. So 26 firehouses, uh, 40 companies total. Um, so a big jump from Marion, Ohio to Cincinnati. But you know what? Um, when you pull up, you know, to a situation, um, many times it's tougher in those communities with three firehouses and two and three people on a, you know, piece of equipment. And, and you don't know when your next resources are coming or where they're coming from. Exactly. So Cincinnati was a, a great place to work very safety centric. Um, and, um, just I'm blessed to have worked there. I know that's a, a lot of rambling to, to it, size it, up. I'll tell you what, it's a great city. Uh, I know that I've attended, uh, not the, the convention that you referenced, but the one, the next one that was held in Cincinnati, forget what year that 14, 2014. Uh, but it's a, yeah, that's a remarkable city. We go there. Um, I know for our shift baseball game annually, um, out to uh, the Great American Ballpark, and they're always, uh, you know, it's a, it is a great ballpark to watch a game, and uh, it's just a great city, and it's a great fire department. Great, it's a great, great city. Union. A lot of character, a lot of history. Yeah. And glad uh, glad uh, my, me and my family are all still there. So. Yeah. So you mentioned that your dad was involved in the firefighters' union. So how did you get involved with union work? I think primarily watching him and uh, my mother. My mother was a 32-year secretary for the um, uh, National Association of Letter Carriers. So she um, she and my father were actively involved. In fact, my grandfather, my mother's father, was an officer in the whatever, steward in the railroad uh, workers uh, union there in Marion. We had a pretty good-sized train yard. And my other grandfather was... Um, uh, in the United Rubber Workers and in pol- dabbling in politics. So I think um, I kind of get it from all that. Um, so you didn't need much convincing about the value no, of being a member of a union. No, that's, um, I mean, that's how we get our new one pair of tennis shoes every summer. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because of, of the union's work and, you know, their hard work to to make to make our unions our world in Marion, Ohio better. And I I think that was instilled in uh, myself and my um, brother and sister. And I think that um, uh, we've continued to instill that in our children, although they're not involved in the union. My grandson wants to be, but um, I think that that's what good union people do is let their children understand how Things happen. Yeah. And, and those unions that your family were involved in or members of and, you know, in certain respects, you know, maybe leaders of were really um, historic, you know, grind unions like that go back exactly. a way in history. Well, that's how we, um, you know, not going to a labor history lesson, but certainly the, um, you know, railroads and transportation and all that strikes and all that stuff that happened that paralyzed the country. And Therefore, union, you know, the union movement kind of started. So anyway, I don't uh, mean to digress, but um, yes, um, certainly my family history kind of um, shaped uh, my lens uh, on the workplace. And, and I'm just so fortunate that I was able to follow in, in those footsteps. So what was your first elected office in the Firefighters Union? Uh, 1987. So I came on uh, Cincinnati in 1984, and um, 1987, so I uh, was placed on the safety committee, as I said, the Cincinnati Local 48, very safety-centric. In fact, I believe our safety committee uh, was maybe one of the first in a fire contract to have veto power of sorts over equipment, uh, personal safety equipment. 
and things like that. So I was placed on the safety committee, which uh, by Forrest Buckley, who I guess got my start, um, and um, very prestigious committee in local forty eight, young, important, important, yeah. So that was like eighty five or six. Hanging around the union office, hanging around, you know, you see it, right? Yeah, getting involved. Yeah, getting involved. And in, in, um, I ran for trustee in 1987. That was a citywide position. So three years on, I visited every firehouse, every unit. So 26 firehouses times three um, and just, you know, beat it up and um, uh, preach safety. So that was my uh, kind of start, trustee election in 1987. And then you moved from there to, what was the next? A recording secretary, then to vice president, and uh, then eventually president. And uh, never been a secretary treasurer. I'd, I always wanted to uh, have the budget approved, tell me how much I have to spend, and I'll put it to good use. I never wanted to be in charge. Right, so right. there you go. Yeah. Uh, how long were you looking for? Everything's been about it. 10-year, dozen-year span. I think I was about 10 years as local president on the board, you know, maybe 14, 15. And then um, um, then I was state president for about 14, and then now I'm going into my eight, be eight years um, uh, in August of 2004, and hopefully four more. We'll see. Yeah. I'm... Um, 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 Willing to do it as long as you all will have it. And uh, Local 48's been, a, um, I think, a, a strong local uh, when you look at in all of the IFF, but it's certainly in the 8th District and in the Midwest, um, and uh, created a path for you to take on the next position. Yeah, I, I, I think so, and had good mentors. Like I said, I mentioned Forrest Buckley, but uh, Tom Donovan, who's still doing it, um, he was my president after Forrest Buckley. I was the recording secretary, his vice president. And then uh, he left for a bit, and then he became my vice president, and he's still vice president today, uh, Local 48. And um, probably a legacy he will leave would be his work on the Human Relations uh, Committee for the IAFF and really uh, building those bridges in Local 48 Um you know, I'll tell you what, you know, 70s and 80s when it was about, um, you know, hiring practices and whatnot. But our fire department became very integrated fairly quickly. And um, Tom Donovan was the person that took that bull by the horns and really um, focused on our relationships at work and still doing it today. So I think I'm I'm proud of that legacy as well with Local 48. Yeah. The uh, Ohio Association of Professional Firefighters became the president. I did. What year was that? I believe 2001, two. Yeah. 2002. And elected in, so 14, yeah, elected in this in 2016. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's a that's a big state organization. It's a big state union. It is. The locals, a lot of members. Yes. I, and there's one thing I, I and I, I think one thing I want to talk about that was, probably where uh, the association probably had to get most involved. And I think when I really started uh, to get to know you, um, and that you had a big fight on your hands. There was, we did. There was some things going on in Ohio. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, that was um, Senate Bill 5, which ended up being Issue 2, um, was literally John Kasich in that wave election. Um, 2010, um, came in and stripped public employees, basically, of their collective bargaining. Um, Which had been fought for and won. Yes. And had been the the, the law on the land in Ohio for... 84, I think it went to effect. Yes. But it had been vetoed, I think, three times prior, going back to my father's yeah. story. He's pretty accurate on things. I did, I did check... Um, you know, the record on some of that stuff when you are in a position, you can check minutes, and check, and he was spot on on all this stuff. At any rate, and, and this was, I mean, the important piece here was this allowed people to come to the table, required people to come to the table to negotiate wages, benefits, working conditions, and yeah. it was a right. It was a right. It was a right. It was so, a, so this yes. was a big impactful. This was big. 
And so basically took those rights away of what we had had, what we had fought for. Um, again, uh, I think the strike in Toledo, uh, when every service was out, the bri- draw bridges were up, everything was in total chaos, is eventually what um, said we got to do something in Ohio. So that was the early 80s. Um, so that had been in place for, you know, decades, right? 2010 uh, and into 11, uh, right off the bat of his um, administration, Kasich um, forced this thing through with his cronies in the House and Senate. Senate Bill 5 was born. It passed very quickly. Uh, and luckily in Ohio, and in, you probably recall, Tony, like in Wisconsin, had same thing kind of going on. Yeah, there's a lot happening. Yes. So. Yeah. Yes. In Ohio, though, we have a referendum. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, I don't know, i just, again, you said I didn't have to study for this, but I think it was right around 600,000 signatures needed. I think we got like 2.2 signatures, to 2.2 million, I should say, to put it on the ballot. As a referendum. To, As a referendum and an to repeal. repeal. Yeah. yeah. So then Senate Bill 5 um, um, was halted, if you will, until the referendum, which became issue 2, uh, and then, uh, yeah, it was um, 65, 35, the, the, the citizenry and the voters uh, overwhelmingly supported um, mm-hmm. public employees. But really, firefighters were the lead in this, and rightfully so, because, you know, um, just we got the trust and we're there to help. And we work to make the public understand that because of our seat at the table to negotiate safety standards for our members, uh, really translated in safety for them. Right. So we were the voice that kind of stood up for the community on this, their safety. And I think that resonated and we firefighters pulled, um, 80% 80% approval rating, 85%, uh, don't, again, don't quote me on the numbers, but the police were always, you know, love our brothers in blue, but they were, you know, they weren't happy when they saw the bowling numbers that we were so pop. <laughs> right. But have you. So it's kind of a few jokes that we had with yeah. them. But, Which they probably already knew, but it was. Yes. Yeah. No, but they, yeah, they, and, they, they do a great job. So For those that may be listening that, that aren't necessarily familiar with a referendum, this is essentially running a statewide campaign to repeal this decision that passed by the legislature and and what the governor ultimately signed. And you won that, but there had to be a plan pulled together in a very short order, a strategy, and then an implementation of the strategy. But through that, I remember one of the things is that um, the membership and labor in general came together, but the Ohio membership, they invested quickly. There was, uh, there had to be money raised because, again, you're running a statewide campaign, uh, not for a candidate, but for an issue, and an issue that both was important to uh, not only firefighters, but as you mentioned, the community. And that was, that was a big deal and and had to be done. I remember you participated in um, rallies, and uh, this was covered very heavily by the media. and the IFF was on the ground, yes. and mm-hmm. you know firefighters from everywhere were on the ground because this was a this was a big deal in terms of what this might look like in the future. And as we know, um, a lot of things in in government and policies sort of begin with a test. And if it can be done in one place, then it might be successful in others. So that you're spot on, and you're spot on about a few different things. Um, so you know. First of the year, new legislature, right? New governor. Well, February, they were passing this legislation. Mm-hmm. So between February and November, right, we all became um, referendum experts. Um, I think probably combined, the yes and the no and just the whole thing, it, it, it was approaching $100 million probably being spent in the state. Uh, and I got to say, Shout out to Tim Bergen, and the AFL-CIO, and really our relationship with the AFL-CIO. We don't um, often call upon it or think about it, but um, public sector was the only uh, unions up for grabs, per se. And every 
labor union in Ohio under the umbrella of the AFL-CIO, and those who aren't also stepped up big time and um, to the tune, I think, our side raised, you know, total, total, probably 40 to 50 million to, to make this operation. So um, firefighters stepped up big time with our um, brand, and that's important, everybody listening, you know, Everybody's watching you every day. I don't tell you nowadays with cameras all over and just all the things we do, uh, but they they are watching. They trust you, uh, and um, we can't really measure how important that is sure. uh, until you need it. Till you got to go back to them on a big issue like this or a levy in your own community. So, so Tony, I know you're a you know political pundit or maybe not a, you know what I'm saying you like dabbling in the politics every day you guys do a great job here in in Indiana and I certainly don't have to tell you gearing up you know with limited time limited resources and trying to overturn something that's already enacted is already you you already kind of got cards stacked against you and I got to say our members stepped up be the face of this thing, in my opinion. And, um, you know, we watch our funds every day to make sure we're spending the money and spending it wisely. And our members recognize this because we had a one-day conference specifically to raise funds for this early on. And we raised, a, we took a motion, $100 per member, which at that time translated to over about a million plus bucks. So they knew what was at stake um, because, um, you know, they value their per capita and they want to make sure we spend it wisely. And, um, you know, people are watching how we do that. But I can tell you this, everybody knew that it was all in. So not only did we raise money there, we also had our treasury in. So uh, the Ohio firefighters really stepped up. And I think that you could say that in Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, Kentucky. I think all over our district, our members um, will step up if needed. Yeah. And we were, you know, recalling that, we were keenly aware of uh, of the fight that, that Ohio firefighters were up against. And, and I think that, that we all learned and, and uh, something from that. And, and I think it's safe to say that we all benefited from the, the activities that went on. We did, there. and we learned that um, politics means something. Elections mean something. If you recall, Michigan, right? Um, they turned things around up there. They had an anti-public yeah. sector governor. Um, Illinois had an anti-public sector union governor. Uh, Ohio certainly had an anti-public sector governor. You guys had a dust up over here with a little right to work, but it wasn't like everywhere else. And obviously, Kentucky, you know, they're strap, they're scrapping every day down there. Um, um, they're doing well now with Bashir, but um, you know, they had a governor coming at their pensions and everything that they had uh, as far as um, rights uh, at the workplace. So we went through a, a phase there from about 2010 you know, four or five years, it was just, um, we had to be on our toes for sure. Safe to say that um, there's never an off season and uh, never take your eye off the ball. Amen, brother. Uh, so I think we need to talk a little bit about uh, your role as district vice president for the 8th district of the IAFF. Well, that's a big question because, first of all, there's 46,000 approximately members in the district, five states. Um, and one of the biggest factors, I believe, is the 824 locals. Um, that is by far the largest district of the IAFF, and I think that's where the rubber meets the road, right, is the affiliate um, uh, services and assistance. And there's a there's a, uh, a structure within the international that uh, there are 16 districts uh, across, and each district comes with a, a vice president. Yes. And uh, you happen to represent the five states, as you mentioned, uh, and Indiana is one of those in the 8th district. What's the what's the responsibility? What's the roles of uh, district vice president? Well, my biggest um, role is to make sure that you all get what you need in the way of services from the IFF. 
uh, provide some guidance, um, just like we all do. What's going on? What do you need? Let's see what we have on the shelf. And if we don't have it on the shelf, let's work to how we can help you get to where you need to be. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's important to note, though, that that is achievable in the 8th District with the numbers I just talked about, the five states, because of the state associations. Mm. Because of the state associations, we are able to deliver that service uh, in a manner that means something on the ground. Um, one vice president's not going to get everywhere, right? Sure. So that's why we lean on you all uh, here with your um, vice president service reps um, who represent the IFF, and we can, um, you know, work cooperatively, right? I think the IFF gets the better end of that, um, that you help us deliver our services onto the, into the, to the affiliates. So, uh, we we have a pretty good model. Um, I think it's um, a model that's very lean, and but is effective. So some days the best place I can be is behind my computer. Yeah, and and right? while we you know we're from an IFF perspective and all the locals um, across the entire IFF, uh, there is uh, up with those sixteen vice president make up the executive board. Which yes. also there are two principal officers, the general president and the general secretary treasurer. Uh, and although we have a convention that uh, each local sends their delegates to every other year, there's the sort of the day-to-day -day operation and then the sort of the long-term and short-term planning that you bring uh, representation for the 8th district to that executive board uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Uh, but you're also doing fielding calls and and sort of managing the resources um, that locals are asking for at the IFF uh, to help them out, whatever that might be. Yes, we um, the board meets four times a year, and that is a week long meeting. Uh, committee work first few days, last couple days of is board meeting. So that is where the official business, all the planning, you know, quarter to quarter, uh, where we're going, and uh, we'll come in and and approve things, um, plan out things. Um, you know, for instance, uh, we have uh, a meeting coming up in December where we've cut some of the committees back because we have some big issues, uh, internal IT, uh, IAFF SMART, how that's going to look in the future. So we're focusing on uh, a few items uh, this December and uh, hopefully going to knock some of those things out. So for instance, the states and the locals that are using SMART, uh, we're looking to maybe tweak that a bit. Uh, um, but that takes um, a lot of input from external helpers, vendors, and whatnot. So we're going to take the time. That's just an example of taking more time uh, so that in the next six months we can plan out what we're going to do with our infrastructure yeah. and the IT. Yeah. Mark, since we have you here and you've been our 8th District Vice President for some time, what does the future look like in the IAFF's 8th District? Well, Eric, the future, I believe, is bright in the 8th District um, on several levels. And one of them right here in, in Indiana, uh, being a leader here recently, is um, the organizing efforts, bringing new jurisdictions and local affiliates into our family, if you will, into our union. Um, and albeit maybe um, locals in some jurisdictions don't have written contracts, but I think the expansion and the work we do in several areas brings value uh, to those jurisdictions. Even if they don't have a, a, a per se written contract, we certainly can help them with their day-to-day -day and rights at work and services offered by the IFF. But I think growth uh, here in the 8th District, um, you know, you've, we've seen some amalgamation through uh, the 8th District, and I think that just provides better service. You all have been a leader here uh, in Indiana on that. Uh, we are hosting our inaugural 8th uh, District conference here in the district. That's a vision by General President Kelly. Uh, to change that up a bit to uh, 
essentially bring the IAFF to the district. So I say that because education is always going to continue. Uh, I think peer support services uh, rendered by the IAFF now being one of the most um, ancillary services, if you will, um, re requested Definitely. by locals. Yes, and and actually kind of it is a reactive um, in nature as well. If something happens that you can't predict, uh, as you know, Tony, we've uh, we've inserted our teams into various places that's that's had tragedy. So uh, I think that is a, that is just going to be an emerging um, subject. And I think every state in our district is creating some sort of network to also uh, augment that. Um, I don't have to tell you about our cancer um, initiatives. For the first time, the IFF has started our own cancer research, albeit it's only about... Uh, uh, five hundred plus thousand dollars, but it's a start. Uh, Derek Irwin, our uh, chief research um, advisor, will be here uh, in at our inaugural uh, conference on Tuesday uh, of this week. And uh, he, Derek, is out of uh, LA County and, and and works as adjunct professor with UCLA. At any rate, um, I think we're doing good things on the on the cancer front this recognition and trying to provide services and assist our locals. So um, politically, you know, we're always going to be doing that, right? Uh, nobody, um, nothing happens unless a decision maker signs it right. or whatever, right? We've all heard those speeches. So right. um, I think that's always going to be, um, but I, uh, you know, right there, but I think that's driven a lot of times from you all and the states and locals. Uh, so I think that uh, providing additional resources through our strategic initiatives uh, department, where we help locals who are uh, really fighting for their lives for funding or what have, or what have you, some political operation that we are assisting there. So uh, those are actually things we're doing now, starting to do, and I, I think we're going to be expanding um, those types of initiatives. Now with me, Again, as I said before, some days best thing I can do is sit behind a computer and direct traffic. Right. Yeah. Get get the locals what they need. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be my goal again uh, to continue to do this as long as uh, I think I'm being effective and, and as long as um, the people I'm working with serving and I believe I am uh, and uh, really listening to you uh, and all the leaders here in the district on what direction you want this IF, IAFF to go. So, Eric, it's a, it's, a, it's a great question, but I think it's really driven by what you all want. Yeah. And what and you, I think what you talked about, that you gave some examples, really comes down to the nuts and bolts of what the IFF does. And, and, and that is we identify issues, problems, uh, and we're doing that to try to, and the efforts are to try to fix those things, to try to alleviate or mitigate or find a solution to some of these problems that face all of our members. Uh, and then, you know, anything that a local is doing that is very specific, but you know, we have a, we have some things that we're trying to deal with. And I think you outlined those, you know, that, that we're trying to get solutions or trying to get fixes here, uh, whether it be, you know, cancer, um, our own mental health and, and wellness, um, all of those things. I think the IFF is, is attacking to help find solutions. And, and we still have to teach people to file grievances. Yes. <laughs> Get right. through that, right? You know, we forget about that. Yes. And, and we have, you know, in addition, uh, sort of what I'm seeing is we have, um, we have a turnover. Uh, we have a lot of new local affiliate officers, um, you know, that whether through retirements or, you know, this, this, this work as a union leader, it can wear you out. So people sometimes need a little break. Uh, so we're also, like you mentioned, we're training you know, the, the future of the IFF and the future of the PFFUI. Um, you know, one thing that the IFF has provided um, to the PFFUI and our locals for a, a number of years, and I think we may have been the first um, to ask for this, is the, the Partnership Education Program, the PEP yes. program, which is, you know, on the ground, delivered instructional um, education. And we hold that every February in conjunction with our Thomas H. Miller legislative conference. So that's coming up in February, the end of February for us. And those are resources 
that are unmatched. There's a cadre of instructors that the IFF has that, that delivers sort of the core um, nuts and bolts of what our leadership needs to be educated on, what they need to know. So we appreciate um, those resources coming back here too. Exactly. We still need those basics. And I think that that's why one of the, the transition to the 8th District Conference type um, program we have coming up this week, I think works because many of our states are providing that PEP. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So we can transition away from the PEP, have something like this, and then, as I said, education is a key, then maybe develop some educational uh, in cooperation with all of our state associations. Maybe next year we bring a little committee, and Eric and his communications crew present something, and we have a podcast like those robot wars you see on TV. Um, everybody does a good, it's a little fun here, but yeah, you, you know, all of our states do a great job, but we, that provides opportunities to bring us all together uh, and create our own content, what we may want to have um, as a eighth district conference in the off year, because I understand that these will only be every other year now with our budgeting. So we may, when you ask what we're going to do in the eighth district, there you go. We yep. may be uh, um, forging ahead to create our own little state association conference. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you, uh, Mark. And I, you know, one thing that, that I'll um, leave our listeners with is that, you know, it, you characterize it about, you know, some of the best thing that you could do is sit behind your computer and direct traffic. But, you know, also you, you have a, a an ear and you've done this for a long time. And I know that any, you return phone calls, you answer the phone and a lot of our local presidents or, or local leaders, um, call you and, and, you know, bounce things off and, and try to, so it's a little more than just direct in traffic. It's, a, it's actually being a, a person that somebody can, can reach and talk to and to get some, uh, sage advice. Well, I, I appreciate that, Tony. And before we wrap, I just want to say, uh, thank you to my lovely bride of 40, going on 44 years, high school sweetheart, Diane Sanders, who, when I'm in my office on the phone at home, I have an office at Local 48 as well. Uh, but a lot of time at home, she um, certainly is very helpful in allowing me to do my work. So to my beautiful bride, I love her, and, and uh, our whole family's there together. So, you know, we need that, right? We need that support, Absolutely. all of us. Absolutely. Uh, and we talked I answer good. She knows it's, it's a team, right? It is a team. It is. Well, and we talked about the mental health a- aspect, and that's a big part of it, of our of our members going home and, you know, being able to have that or whatever their situation is at, at their, what they call home. But that's important to have that support because like you said, not only doing the job, labor leaders also get hit with the damnedest things, Yeah, you know, and very tragic things that happen to our members and local leaders sometimes I think get it coming and going. So uh, for all you local leaders out there, thank you for what you do. And all of uh, our affiliates here listening to the PFFUI podcast, thumbs up to the team here. Great to have you here, Mark. And uh, I know uh, we probably have some listeners from uh, Michigan and uh, Illinois. And I know that that, uh, I mentioned those because they both have podcasts uh, for their state association. So um, I know that they're listening to us and we're listening to them too. Uh, This is a competition, right, Eric? Uh, Can we just say there, you know, who has the best podcast? I, well, right. Well, they're all very good. All right. They're all like having grandkids, right? Yeah. Competitive spirit. Yeah, there's nothing better in the fire service. Uh, and, uh, you know, whoever thought we'd be competing about podcasts? But, you know, it's a good excuse. It's a good excuse. It is. Illinois has got a good one. You guys are coming up. Uh, they've invited me a few times. It has not worked, my schedule. But, uh, yeah, this we had a little fun with it. But I think, uh, yeah, we should get everybody in a room and we'll cast off. Speaking of cast off, it's fight time. Huh? Yeah, well, uh, thank you, Mark, for taking time out of your day to help us record this podcast. And uh, thank you for joining the best podcast in the 8th District of the IFF. Oh, my. There we go. Well, all right. Cut out what you don't need. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the PFFUI podcast. Follow us on social media by searching the Professional Firefighters Union of Indiana. For more information about news and upcoming events, visit www.pffui.com. Until next time, this is PFFUI Communications Director Eric Schoeb. Stay safe.